I'm the other guy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so after this introduction, uh, which kind of uh, precedes my talk, we'll change scenery. And um, I will try to convince you why should we operate on paranoid sinus choosing the open approach. Uh, we'll start with our short ideology and pathogenesis, uh, review of the literature, and then we'll move into uh, personal aspects, because this issue involves lots of personal preferences and um, personal beliefs. So, uh, almost 180 years ago, Mayo described a hair containing sinus, and about 14 years afterwards, Anderson described that he, how he extracted the hair from an ulcer. It was only in 1880 that Hodge coined the term pylonidal sinus, meaning a nest of hairs. During World War II, almost 80,000 American soldiers were admitted to hospitals with what then called jeep disease because it was attributed to prolonged sitting in the uh, vehicles. Naturally, men are more involved than women uh, uh, of young age, and uh, patients with dark and stiff hair have more of these disease than um, others. It may be asymptomatic, and the incidence is uh, definitely a um, not well defined, but as we all uh, can see from our clinics, we see it a lot. So it's not an uncommon disease, uh, although not very well liked, as uh, Professor Saifan mentioned. In um, Karidakis, who has a significant role in the uh, treatment of this disease, uh, published in 1992 a paper uh, defining or claiming that this is an acquired disease involving a loose hair that by any kind of insertion forces penetrates a uh, vulnerable skin, creating the pathology. We can see here in this uh, diagram how um, a normal follicle can get infected with an acute, and an abscess turns into a chronic abscess, and in the end we have this epithelial tube we're all familiar with, um, which is the end, the end stage of this disease. So, there are many ways to skin a cat, we've heard about that before. There's the open approach, which involves um, probably a fistulotomy and a curating the, uh, the, um, the tissue, or marsupialization. There's the BASCOMS uh, uh, approach, which is, I would say, an intermediate between closed and open approach, um, but that's definitely um, a personal definition. And there's a closed approach, which also has several options. There's a way of primary closure, there's the Karidakis procedure, um, skin grafting, cleft closure, and there are variable flaps, the Z-plasty, the VY-plasty, rhomboid flaps, gluteus maximus flaps, and other options which I did not um, discuss here yet. So, what the literature say? Um, in a recent study from, uh, published by Laurent and, and colleagues, uh, they prospectively um, followed uh, 80 patients, about half going the open procedure and half the closed procedure. Um, they mentioned that the healing rate of the closed procedure is higher at one month, but there is no difference at a healing rate <coughs> at, at one year after the procedure. A study from Turkey, um, about 200 patients, 100 going the open approach, and about 100 um, the closed approach. No differences um, in the wound infection, recurrence rate between the three groups, but they definitely say that there's a relatively shorter period of uh, returning to work and recovering following the primary closure uh, or the skin flaps methods, something to be taken under consideration. Um, a Cochrane database review, uh, combining 26 studies and over 2,500 patients, uh, where only 17 studies uh, compared the open versus the closed approach. The authors concluded that healing times were faster after sur surgical closure, something we saw in all the previous papers, uh, and stuff, something that definitely goes um, on. Uh, without any, any other, um, uh, any other uh, problems. Um, the surgical site infection uh, rate did not differ between the approaches, and the recurrent rate was lower in the open approach um, combined to the uh, closed approach. There was no clear benefit uh, shown for open healing over surgical closure. However, if you do uh, perform closed approach, the uh, Cochrane database turns you to, um, uh, to perform an off middle enclosure to be the standard management of care. So, paranoidal sinus, how I do it. 
it's done uh, under uh, in ambulatory surgery. Uh, uh, the patient are, will are discharged the same day. I do not give any prophylactic antibiotics. I use regional anesthesia. The patient is positioned in a prone jack knife position. The area is shaved. I do not use any blue dye. I perform a midline incision over a lacrimal probe and excise the cyst in a hole. The cavity is then, of course, uh, packed with gel foam to uh, maintain hemostasis. The patient is discharged home the same day with wound care instructions, and I see them in the office one week after surgery and three weeks after surgery. So why do I think the open approach is superior to the other options? Although it's high maintenance um, in the post-operative period, it practically has min takes minimal time and efforts. I do not leave any drains, so um, that definitely sa saves lots of time and uh, consideration with the patients. And there are no serious complications, no flat necrosis, no wood hinsons, and no deep infection. So, to conclude, uh, this is a simple and short procedure. The time definitely is different than the time consumed by, when performing a closed procedure. And it has similar long-term results when compared to closed approach. So my personal preference is, uh, although considered less surgically aesthetic, is to perform an open procedure and open resection, open uh, excision for um, palonidal sinus. Professor Milito, after we heard so much, um, <laughs> you can come over and show what would you do um, the other option, please.